Hey, it's Wednesday, April 22nd, and we're going to continue the, oh, wait a second, I've got to do this thing. Uh, mute everybody. There we go. Now we get to do the official learning thing. Again, I should be able to see your hands if you have a question. It pops up right in front of me uh, as we get a chance to do our whole learning thing. This is the advanced class, not the regular class. We're doing farther with gospel according to Larry. Uh, a few little bitty talky things and then more reading things. And then tomorrow, uh, just a little bit of reading. And then you guys get to go off on your own for a bit. Uh, and we'll talk about that coming up in a second. Let me do my screen share of our PowerPoint for today because life is wonderful. Screen share. Wait, no, over here. Come on, come on, computer. You can do it. There you go. And there, and screen share. And boom diggity. There we go. All right, let's see. Uh, see, I did update Skyward up through this morning, so everything that had been turned in by 9.30 is included on Skyward. Again, if you are missing work from last week, uh, you're going to have to, actually, if you're missing work from before today, you have to email it to me because uh, the rooms close each day and they rotate through. So if you have, um, I want to say late work, let's say makeup work. So any late grades from last week or makeup work from yesterday, you have to email me the answer. The Socrative is only open on that day. Uh, that's just sort of how these things work out in general. Uh, move this round over to here and then over to here. So if you want to be able to use the Socrative, you have to do the day I assign it. Otherwise, it becomes an email me issue. Um, as Caleb has pointed out, good Zoom etiquette. Uh, don't spam chat and don't try to take over my screen share, even if you're screen sharing pictures of me. Uh, and I may be my own favorite subject, uh, but still bad Caleb on that one. Uh, let's see. Work from last week. You can still turn stuff in, but it's late grade. Your checkpoint gospel-wise in the book is going to be to finish the book, uh, not finish the book, through page 114 by next Tuesday. Uh, we're going to get up to, I don't know, 50 or 60-ish, depending on how things go today. Uh, we'll get just a little bit tomorrow, and then your checkpoint will be 114. Uh, now, technically, it's a soft deadline because you have a quiz on Tuesday of next week. And um, then we're going to move on from there. So Tuesday of next week, really short video. And then you guys just taking the quiz that's going to be for that day. Uh, and so it'll be our next checkpoint coming up. 114 of gospel by uh, next week. And remember, don't write in the book because it is my book and you're going to be giving it back to me. So don't get too excited with this one. At some point, you are going to be giving this book, returning it to me. So I'll have to hunt you down next year. So just letting you know from there. Click. Click. Uh, today was show off your FJ spirit wear, hence me wearing my red and my black. Uh, that's my FJ spirit suit. Tomorrow is throwback pictures. I'm going to try and put a throwback picture of myself up there. And then Friday's dress for success. I did not send out yesterday's picture on Remind. I did post it to social media. It was uh, me in my brony socks because uh, I have the, my little pony socks that I wear usually for Camp Tecumseh, which, by the way, if we had been at Camp Tecumseh, right now you guys would be getting ready to come back home on a bus after being at Camp Tecumseh for the past two days. And the globe trotters would be getting ready to leave. But so it is. Um, again, for those of you who have not been paying attention, I have updated e-learning. Once an assignment is late or you have to do a makeup assignment, uh, you have to then email it to me. Information is going to be on there. Otherwise, you can go through and I have the week stuff. I'll update each week with the new thing that's going to be up there. Scroll down, find that day. The question is not on the website. The question is going to be in the actual video. So watch it and then you should be good to go from there. Schedule for today, we're going to do the video and then answering the Socratic questions. I'll show you here in a second. We're going to talk more about it. Uh, talk a little bit about yesterday's question in a second too. And then tomorrow, you're going to have a different kind of homework assignment that's not Socratic. It's going to involve Canvas and a bit more work on your part. Slightly more fun because you're going to get a chance to use a chat room and like talk to each other and stuff like that, which there's a chance you may enjoy on some level. Here is today's question. For today, once again, screenshot for those of you who are wanting to do this work without having to come back and watch the video this afternoon, you're going to want to screenshot this one. Uh, today's room name is Q42220 for question April 22nd of 2020. Today's question, if you could pick a topic for Larry or Josh to write a sermon about, a rant, because we're going to read like two more rants today, what would it be and why? So I just want you to tell me the topic and why you think that would be a good ranty topic. Uh, this was inspired by many of you guys who ranted to me yesterday on yesterday's question when I was talking about give me a good thing and a bad thing about Josh. And some of you guys went off on that poor boy. 
uh, and we're going to find more about it today. Some of you guys went off on other people like Beth, and you're like, why don't I get to attack Beth? Why can't Beth be a horrible person? And I'm like, you'll get your chance to yell at Beth too. Goodness gracious. So I figured apparently y'all have a bunch of pent up rage and anger. So today's, <laughs> sorry, I can see your guys' faces. I was watching like 12 of you all nod your heads. Yes, we have pent up rage and anger. So I figured this would give you a chance to pick the thing that you would like to have Josh write about if you could have him do a sermon today. All right. Yesterday's, I enjoyed it. Uh, for the most part, you guys come up with a random different things about the good things about him and the bad things. Um, we're going to find out more about Josh and why he's not as horrible person as you might think. And we're also going to find out a bit more about Beth and why she might not be as good as you think. Although given for some of your guys' rants, some of you guys really don't like poor Beth. Uh, but we'll get into that here in a moment too. All right, for today's reading, uh, again, ebook version is on my website. For those of you who don't have the book, you can listen to me read, but starting tomorrow, you are going to have to do some reading on your own, you know, that whole advanced class thing. Uh, and so there is the ebook version on my website that you're welcome to have access to. So now you get to settle in and enjoy yourself in that random spot in your room, uh, underneath or next to your bed or underneath your bed or on top of a loft or next to the ceiling or, you know, for Riley, next to a pile of crab legs. Uh, whatever your particular thing may be, as we get into the story. Listen, we talked about Bloomingdale's. Oh, yeah. Uh, and this will pop up a couple times in the story, the fact that Josh uh, likes to go at the Bloomingdale's to talk to his mom, and he does that talking out loud to random strangers to hear from his mom. That's going to pop up quite a bit as he <clears throat> tries to channel his mother. Uh, the makeup counter, again, where the best place where he feels he channels his mother, which is kind of odd seeing an 18-year-old or 17-year-old boy sitting in the makeup counter talking to random strangers might make you think he's crazy but the more we find out about him the more we find out he's kind of crazy anyway it's all good uh and this was him he does this whole yoga position thing all the time and then we got to Catherine, who is a big fan of humpty dumpty uh and the idea that uh, that's going to pop up a little bit more coming up for too and the fact that she buys a whole bunch of humpty dumpty stuff on ebay and then him using the magic eight ball oh i have a magic eight ball in the basement i should have brought that up oh well and the, for those of you who might know, and this is where I wish that we had it uh, on the, um, the talking to each other, I would ask you, who are the people in the bottom right-hand corner? Because that's going to pop up here in just a second, too. Uh, but if you know, go you. If not, it's going to be on the next screen, and I'm going to tell it to you. Or you could flex on other people by putting it into the chat, because I can see the chat as it goes through all, so that's up to you on that one. All right, so we found out just yesterday uh, that apparently the main character who's been talking to us, Josh, is also Larry. He's the one that's creating the website. And apparently catfishing people is one of his favorite things to do because he did catfish his uh, uh, counselor. Thank you. And then he did catfish uh, kind of Beth and the rest of the world. But we're getting into that. So we're going to pick up on page 39 where it says part two. And now we get into more about Josh. So hang on a second. We're going to go to stop and share. Aha. And we'll come to me, spotlight this fellow. Spotlight me. All right. Page 39, part two. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Uh, it's one of those things where you go back and you sort of reread those little intro sections. They make more sense to you. So if you go back to part one, which is like way back on page five, it says, part one, this is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things. We know that his testimony is true. Uh, that's where we find out, ironically, that Josh was the one writing it and the fact that he said stuff that was not true. So it's sort of like pointing out when you go back and read it, um, it's sort of like telling you what's going to happen. So same thing here with part two. The website started out as most of my projects do, as a way to not be bored, a way to create something interesting out of nothing. Also, it was that holiday juggernaut that starts with Halloween, gains steam over Thanksgiving, and comes to a roaring crescendo with Christmas and New Year. The commercialism had reached an all-time high last year, and I felt a desperate need to rebel, especially with mom not being here. Creating the site was a way to distract myself during that torturous and overwhelming time. Footnote, it hardly even dented the sadness. I, des sorry, I designed the graphics, set up the website using my cell phone as the modem so the line couldn't be traced. Footnote, I got the phone from an ad in the back of a magazine and registered it to a post office box. I could have done the whole webcam, hey, look at me thing, but even online, my privacy was crucial. 
This all came at a time when I was designing a series of biblical action figures for, well, no other reason than my own entertainment, of course. Footnote, my favorites were Samson and Delilah. She came with scissors and his hair could actually be removed. So I called the site the Gospel According to Larry, Larry being the most unbiblical name I could think of. So now you know why it's called Gospel According to Larry. Because basically it was just a thing he was reading at the time, and Larry seemed very non-Bible-ish. Because I don't believe there's any Larrys or Lawrences in the Bible. At first, it was funny. Just two or three hits a day. Lonely internet nomads with nothing better to do than read the rantings of another spiritual pilgrim. The comments were mostly positive, and some of the arguments were stimulating. So I began to stay up later and later to put more time into my sermons. Someone even posted an article from a local newspaper about the site. Reading that was a hundred times more gratifying than my early acceptance letter to Princeton. Believe me. People started emailing Larry, asking who he or she was. One day I had the idea of photographing my possessions. Footnote, the subject of my stuff needs its own chapter. I'll do that one next. Scanning them and posting them to the website. Would it be possible to track down an anonymous person anywhere in the world by the things he or she owned? That question intrigued me. I made a bet with myself that I could photograph each item in such a way that no one could track me down. It was a Catch-22, a famous book about the fact that uh, Catch-22 is an idea that uh, you lose whether you win or not. It's the fact that it comes from this idea of, uh, anyway, long story short, Catch-22 means no matter what you do, you're going to lose or win. So, I was happy that what I did was interesting to others, but because Larry's identity was unknown, I couldn't take any credit for the phenomenon, couldn't use it on my resume, or more importantly, brag about it to someone like Beth. I could, I suppose, but there's something pretty slimy about a philosopher seeking attention for personal gain. Footnote, witness the televangelists, if you don't believe me. If you don't know the televangelists, they're the guys who go on and do like the, the Bible preaching and say, send me thousands of dollars because God told me to. Those are televangelists. Tele meaning television, evangelist meaning preach the Bible. So I found myself in the awkward position of starting my own fan club. It was a routine almost worthy of the Python troop, or maybe just the Three Stooges. The irony and just plain weirdness of it invigorated me, and I spent the next hour sorting through the photographs of my possessions, deciding which one to post the next day. So one, that picture I showed you a second ago with the eight ball and the three people in the bottom corner, those are the Three Stooges that he's talking about. Another great one, if you've not spent your time Googling, uh, you should Google the Three Stooges and then be entertained because there's a slapstick, the nip, 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 where you, like, you poke a guy in the eye and they put a hand up like that, and you poke him like that, and you hit him on the head, and they fall. Great stuff. You could spend an hour watching Three Stooges hit each other in the head. But anyway, more importantly here with Josh, he did not start this website to catfish uh, poor Beth. That was not his intention. He did it just to entertain himself. If you can imagine creating your own TikTok account where you just don't want to put your face on there because your parents yell at you. And so you just create an anonymous one just that you can post random artwork or something like that. But then it becomes like this huge thing that people start to follow. And then your friends start talking about it. Then at what point do you tell your friends, hey, you know, that famous TikToker that everyone's talking about that does all the great artwork. Well, that's me. But then it feels kind of weird to claim it. And that's where he is now. He didn't try to start it that way. He wanted just to have a place where he could post a thing to have fun, and then it sort of blew up because people like it when you angrily rant about things. So it wasn't necessarily his fault, and he was not trying to catfish. It just happened out that way. Hang on one second. Over to here. I want to show the next picture. Now nah, that's just more Three Stooges. You guys can go about Three Stooges. All right, page 44. Picture Larry item number 11, belt on a doorknob. I learned many things living with an advertising executive for five years. One of them was that for a company to succeed, it needed a marketing niche. It wasn't enough to start up a website. I needed a message, a product, something. Well, a product was out pretty much because I'm the most unmaterialistic person I know. In fact, I only own 75 possessions. Counting all the clothes, underwear, school supplies, recreational equipment, meaning sports stuff, software, key to the family house, 75. It's my little secret. Even Beth doesn't know about it. Most people probably have more than 75 things in their top desk drawer, let alone their entire life. My list of guidelines. If I got a new CD, 
uh, for those of you who don't know what a CD is anymore, because all you do is stream music on Apple, uh, a CD is like a little silver disc, looks like a DVD, and you have to like plug it into a machine and, goes, and it plays music and only has like 12 songs on it. That's a CD. Again, you should probably Google it at some point. I either traded for it or I had to sell an old one. Same with books and videos. Thank God for libraries. Again, this was written, I think he did all of this with his life. It was right around the time I started teaching. So it was around 98, 99-ish. Uh, so this is way before we had digital streaming. And that, yes, Natalie, good job. Those are CDs. I'm so proud of you on that one. Apparently, some of you guys do have CDs out there. Uh, and this was before we had streaming services. And so back then at this time, um, it was, hang on a second. So back then at this time, uh, they didn't have streaming services. So if you wanted to watch like a movie, you had to have like actual videos and DVDs and stuff like that. So that's what he goes through and rotates through. I rented skis whenever I went to the mountains, borrowed basketballs, downloaded free software and music online. A notebook counts as one thing, even though it has 70 sheets of paper. A pair of socks counts as one. So do shoes. I don't keep things like stamps around. I don't want to feel tied down by them. I take letters to the post office so the stamps don't even come into my possession. I've been like this since eighth grade. When I read about some Native Americans not wanting to leave too many footprints on the earth when they left, I took it literally. Every single thing I bought was a major, major decision. I asked myself if I could live up to the responsibility of owning it, maintaining it, housing it, in other words, do I have to own this new item so badly that it's worth removing something else with meaning from my list of 75 sacred possessions? People always talk about writing what you know. So I got the idea into my head that Larry should discuss something he, I, know about. And anti-consumerism was certainly one of those things. Um, again, if you don't know what anti-consumerism, consumerism is the idea of buying things is good. We are a consumer society. We like to buy things. That's why Amazon is worth a bajillions of dollars. Anti-consumerism means that you go against the idea of buying things, that owning things is not important. It's more important like getting to know people and stuff like that. Josh is all about owning stuff, not good. Knowing people is good. Um. Plus, the topic was just beginning to grab a foothold in the culture. There were all these books coming out about simplifying your life. Kids were crossing out logos on t-shirts. Maybe they were only a few freedom fighters, but I thought it could really be a trend in the making. I liked being at the forefront of a movement, and with Peter being head of a giant advertising agency, it gave me the feeling of sleeping with the enemy. A spy versus spy vibe that kind of excited me. Hiccup. So it was decided. Larry's mission statement would be to take on waste and overspending and cultural brainwashing, unless I felt like writing about something else, of course. I'm not saying I came up with this elaborate plan to impress Beth during her extended throw phase. Let's just say it didn't hurt. All right, so the idea of 75 items he just talked about, that's going to be your assignment tomorrow. You're going to be going on Canvas, and you are going to list the 75 items you could not live without. Clothing items, items you own, and stuff like that. You're going to have to actually list them out and number them and go through and stuff like that. And you have to be able to read other people's and comment on them. So whatever you post, realize other people are going to be seeing this list because it's going to be created into this chat room. We're going to be putting like writing your whole list and responding to each other. It's going to be creating conversations and stuff like that. Because a lot of this Larry website involves existing on this whole uh, website and chat room, we're going to create our own Larry website chat room thing and talk to each other from there. But that'll be for tomorrow. The first Larry meeting was held in Mr. Blake's Spanish room after school at 2.30. The tiny classrooms overflowed with kids from every clique, goths, jocks, wallflowers, techies, shop rats, nerds, and even a few cheerleaders. As if jocks weren't bad enough, we needed people to cheer them on. Pfft, please. Everyone, Beth yelled, let's get going. I made Beth promise to hold the reins herself. Okay, being involved in your own fan club was one thing. Running it was something else entirely. Marlon raised his hand. Uh, my friend in Wichita, uh, that's in Kansas. He's currently living somewhere in New England, which is over like in the Vermont area. So nowhere near where he actually is. My friend in Wichita said there's a sticker in the bathroom of a bookstore on Route 101 that says, Larry. 
Oh, my cousin in LA said that kids in her school set up a new Larry link that gets over a hundred hits a day, Jessica added. My sister went to ski camp and saw a guy wearing a Larry for president button, Eli said. I tried to close my gaping mouth, but couldn't. April Fool's Day was last week, wasn't it? I was now face to face with the downside of living in semi-isolation. Sure, Larry was an up and coming site, but stickers, buttons, no one had mentioned them in the chat rooms. Then I remembered my conversation with Flip Off a few days ago about changing the world and the light came on as if after a power failure. I was changing the world. I mean, a tiny bit at a time, of course, but still, I was out there, I was contributing. Even the undersized desk and chair I sat in couldn't contain me anymore. Leah from my homeroom talked about Larry's commitment to making the world a better place. Had I ever uttered that sentiment to her on any given morning, the look of disdain on her face would have been enough to jackhammer me into the concrete floor. The meeting ended with Jessica singing a song she'd written about Larry's influence on her life. Jessica was this goth chick who had permanent dibs on the spot outside the gym to smoke between classes. I usually ran from the gaze of her heavily outlined eyes, but today I found myself quite moved. These people who wouldn't talk to me if I burst into flames in the middle of study hall were analyzing and interpreting Larry's every word. Now, quick pause on that again. Uh, this is one of those things where nowadays that we have things like TikTok on Instagram, especially TikTok, the fact that any random person can become an influencer. Uh, way back in our actual history, Josh Swinson, or Larry, was one of our first influencers. And the fact that he was the, the first person that had to deal with the idea that what you do impacts and influences other people. And so it was sort of freaking him out that no one knew it was him, but everyone was going through and interpreting all the words he was saying. Um, if you know who the Charlie is from TikTok, she's a girl that's 15 years old. She's literally two years older than you and gets invited to like NBA games and has like all these millions of followers. That's a lot of pressure to put on someone who's only 15. So same thing here with Larry, 17 influencing the world. That's a lot of pressure that goes on someone. It's so great to focus on the big picture, not just our stupid little lives at school. Beth bounced down the corridor as she spoke to me. We'll go to my house and brainstorm. You want to stay for dinner? Suddenly, the evolution of the world's spiritual growth seemed meaningless compared to my relationship with Beth reaching a new level. I tried to remain calm. Yeah, sounds great. Good, it's settled. As we passed the gym, I heard a grunt that pounded my heart like a stone. Beth unhooked her arm from mine, then wheeled around to face Todd. I thought you had practice, she asked. It's canceled. Coach ate some bad fish for lunch. That's my Todd voice. Feels like I nailed it. Speaking of bad fish, I stared at his jacket so I wouldn't have to look at his face. He should have been nicknamed The Wizard instead of me because Beth's personality and voice changed right before my eyes. Oh no, I hope he's okay. I shot her a look that bordered on contempt. She elbowed me back hard. My mom's, I'm oh sorry, my mom's still at work. You want to come over? Somehow I knew I wasn't included in the invitation. I think that's doable, she answered. I pulled Beth aside. I thought you were over him, I half whispered, half shouted. Look, I feel bad about this. I do, but I've got to keep my options open. And with that, Beth slammed the door on the elaborate fantasy I had already constructed in my feeble mind. Even worse, the idea never occurred to Todd that I might possibly be considered a threat. I was as hazardous to his position as a, a flea. I got back in her face. The big picture, Pfft, yeah, right. What's your problem? Can't we work on this tomorrow? I told her tomorrow I was working on my Frisbee robotics project. We'll definitely reschedule. She waved goodbye in front of Todd, who still hadn't noticed my presence. But no, if his face was any blanker, you could show movies on it. How can you do this to me? He's boring and I'm, I'm, but I knew the word Larry would never emerge from my lips. The sad thing was even Larry couldn't compare to the hormonal tug of Todd Terrific. I looked up toward the heavens or at least to the stained ceiling tile of the hall. Mom, 
this sucks, help. And I stood there until I knew what I needed to do. Then I ran. I usually wrote my sermons sitting on the swing in my basement, but this called for a whole new level of solitude. I rode my bike past the stores, past the theater, toward the nature preserve behind the cemetery. Until I got my all-terrain bike, I used to leave my bike at the top of the trail and hike in. Footnote, possession number 54. I had to sell my guitar to get it. Now I bounce over roots and rocks with ease. I have only an hour and a half of daylight, but with this much adrenaline pulsing through me, that was all the time I'd need. I pulled my bike up against a cluster of maples and hiked about half a mile. The trail disappeared, and I crawled through the brambles until I reached the familiar birch and woodpile. I brushed the leaves aside, moved the tarp, and descended into the large hole. My underground room measured 10 by 12 paces, pretty much the size of my bedroom at home. From top to bottom, it was about seven feet. A few years ago, it had taken me a month of afternoons and Saturdays to dig it. Since then, I came once a week to think or unthink, as the case may be. Uh, Andre, you have a question? What's up? Uh, oh, uh, what counts as uh, what counts as a as, as something you own for the canvas thing? You'll find out tomorrow because we'll talk more about that in tomorrow's video. I go through and explain all of that. I have a, a written thing for you guys to be able to read, so I'll make it much easier on you. Don't freak out too much about it. I folded my blanket into quarters and then sat down on the thawing earth. I took the fully charged laptop from my pack and began. Sermon number 113. Okay, this sermon is off the usual topic, but I've got to write about it anyway. Can we talk about phonies? About people who pretend they're your best friend? No, they are your best friend until somebody better comes along. People climbing their way up the social ladder are just as bad as people climbing their way up the corporate one, moving from one click to another, checking out the people on the next rung, working their way up like freaking caterpillars until one day, poof, they leave one rung for good on to bigger and better things. Then they get rejected in the new click, of course, and come slithering back to their friends on the lower rung. And you're supposed to sit there like some dope, guarding seats at a concert, never realizing your friends found a better section and have left you behind. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of welcoming the same old people back into the fold. Hey, once you make the choice to move on, move on. Don't come back when your new friends leave. Don't come back when somebody breaks up with you. Don't come back when you want to feel like yourself again because you're tired of spending all that energy trying to act like somebody you're not and you just want to be accepted by people who always like the real you. Tired of keeping up the front of being some witty, gorgeous, happy, considerate person you're not? Tired of waiting for your new friends to appreciate your inner self? Well, too bad. Take two aspirin and don't call me in the morning. <sighs> that felt better. As much as I wanted to, I knew I couldn't send it out right away. Beth would never in a million years suspect that I was Larry, but still, the timing of this one was a tad obvious. I'd save it and email it later, let Beth think she was safe from Larry's gaze for a few brief moments. I made a list of some upcoming topics, national anti-shopping day, corporate boycotts, celebrity worship, I snapped my PC shut and took a few deep breaths. If I sat in this pit for the rest of my life, I could never get enough of the damp earth smell. It was the mixture of life and death that attracted me, nature's primordial scent. I climbed out, covered my hideout, then stood in the tree pose among the maples. Almost twilight, my favorite time of day. As a kid, I was addicted to Game Boys. My fingers punched those buttons day and night. Again, a Game Boy is the very first like Nintendo Switch way back then. Again, if you've not Googled it, you should Google Nintendo Game Boy. It was a black and white one from back in 1989. I think I got it when I was in eighth grade. Uh, and they're really kind of nifty. Nowadays, we have like the Switch, which is super awesome, but there's like the first version of it. Huh. I love the mental and visual stimulation. It's strange, but the opposite was also true. I love the silence, the openness of the forest. I felt humbled by its weight and the thought of uttering anything seemed ridiculously unnecessary. Every time I came here, the same thought returned. I live here. Keep spreading the word, be a hermit, escape from the crap 
from the stuff from the phonies. Could a culture junkie like me disconnect from civilization and still live? Thoreau did. Could I? I lay back against the tree. Luckily, I did not have to decide today. Page 58 is uh, two pictures. Uh, again, this may be a picture of uh, items 14 and 32, which is going to be his watch. And I believe that's Ganesh, Hindu god. Uh, it's the elephant one. But I, ooh, nicely done. Ryan does have an old Game Boy he is showing up there. Uh, let's see, hang on a second. Let's go to here. Ryan, I'm spotlighting. Nicely done. That's the, I'm going to say Game Boy SP, if I remember right. Is that the, you're unmuted. Is that the right one, Game Boy SP? Yeah. Yeah, nicely done. Uh, we had some of those, so we had, uh, we had the dual screen one and stuff like that, too. Cool. Well done, you. I saw, as soon as I said that, I saw you take off running. I was like, ooh, I wonder if he has one. Nicely done, Ryan. Good pull. Right, so there, then back to this guy. Spotlight that kid. Yay, it's me. Uh, let's see, and then to there. Let's see, there's another one coming up. Ooh, yeah. I want to read just a little bit more because there is a thing coming up that I want you guys to know about. All right. So almost done. Give me another couple minutes, and I'll be done with you guys. Two days later, I attended Beth's piano recital, all of it Bach, even more than the music. I loved the way she grinned through her mistakes. Not nervous like the other musicians, just ecstatic at being able to make music, flaws and all. On the ride home, we complained about the college application process, especially the essays. You need a crystal ball to answer them, she said. Everyone says just to make stuff up, but I can't. You know how I feel about being honest. I slumped back into the seat and changed the subject. When I saw her the next day, she was at my back door waving a piece of paper. Her cheeks were flushed as if she'd just heard bad news. Have you read today's sermon? I grabbed the paper from her hand. With her concert, I'd forgotten all about my rant in the woods. I asked her why it upset her so much. It's me. It's the other day with Todd. I was so insensitive, and all he wanted to do was just fool around anyway. You can't possibly be surprised. The only thing I'm surprised at is what a glutton for punishment I am. Such a loser. She looked me straight in the eye. Feel free to stop me anytime. I motioned for her to continue. Ah. Ah. Are you sure you didn't call Larry up and ask him to write this? It's so appropriate, it's scary. I almost dropped the glass of seltzer water in my hand. Yeah, he said. No problem, Josh. I'll get right on it. She asked me if I'd seen Larry's latest possession. It's a man's watch, but women wear them all the time. At least my mother does. Maybe your mom is Larry. Yeah, right. And a statue of some Hindu deity. I looked it up. Ganesh. I saw it this morning. I felt a hey, I was right. I felt a wave of anxiety break inside of me. The statue had belonged to my mom. I kept it wrapped in my closet. The only reason I posted it so soon was because Beth had never seen it. Then maybe you saw this too? Beth handed me another piece of paper and thankfully changed the subject. The printout also came from the Larry site, copied from one of the bulletin boards. Bulletin boards are what we're going to be using tomorrow. Come out, come out, wherever you are, Larry. Why are you hiding behind your anonymous screen name? Who are you? Afraid no one would listen if we all knew what a loser you were? Signed, Beta Gold. I'd read messages from Beta Gold before. He or she actually wrote slash shouted in quite often, but never with this amount of confrontation. What does this have to do with us? I asked. Well, hopefully the nut jobs aren't going to start coming out of the woodwork. I mean, can Larry have some peace, do you mind? I took a new jar of peanut butter from the cupboard and cut up some apples from the bowl on the table. Beta Gold's message was certainly disconcerting. The last thing I needed was to blow my cover in front of Beth. I handed her the peanut butter and a spoon. She dipped the spoon into the jar. Like being the first person to walk in the snow, she said. I've always fought to be the first person to nail a new jar of jiff, but it was worth giving that up just to watch Beth lick the spoon clean. Yeah, I know, he has a crush on her. It's kind of creepy. He'll just have to roll with it for a while. Beth looked at me with her most determined expression. I get, <laughs> sorry, with the whole Beth thing, a lot of you guys had written in about the fact of the whole Josh's creepy obsession with Beth. It's going to get worse. Don't worry. Beth looked at me with her most determined expression. I give you full permission to go into my father's store, aisle three on the left, take down a giant ball-peen hammer, 
rubber handle, better grip, and bang me on the head repeatedly the next time I jump at any guy's command. I'm not sure if Pavlov himself could deprogram you that easily. It was that simple. We were back to our old selves. We ate apples and peanut butter like we did in grade school and talked about what kind of tattoos our teachers would get if we forced them into it. I already have tattoos. You can't force me. She told me about her cousin in Seattle having surgery. I told her how worried I was that Catherine might actually move in with Peter and me. After Beth left for the hardware store, I hurried to the computer to see Beta Gold's message for myself. Afraid no one would listen if we all knew what a loser you were. Was Beta Gold right? Is that one of the reasons why I hid behind my screen name? I typed out a generic response with phrases like freedom of speech and the right to privacy, but deep inside, I worried about something much less constitutional. What if somebody found me out before I reached my desired level of contribution? I had to get moving, step up Larry's productivity. The sermons were fun, but I was already getting tired of my own voice. Let's face it, my sermons were just my opinion mixed in with a little rhetoric and passion. If some people were moved by them, great. The last thing I wanted to do, however, was lecture other kids. I felt strongly about these things. Sure, but hey, make up your own mind. It's not like I'm an expert on anyone but myself. I decided to keep up the sermons, but expand the website with additional features, attract some new people, make things a little punchier. If Beta Gold was planning to out me, he or she had better think again. Last part, we'll read Sermon 137. How about this for a fashion show? On one side of the runway, you've got models wearing the trendy clothes kids spend their hard-earned money on. Cruising down the other side, you've got the poverty-stricken youth from Southeast Asia who make this must-have collection. The contrast should be enlightening or maybe just embarrassing. Doesn't anyone else care about the increasing gap between the haves and the have-nots? Millions of people wearing the finest clothes, eating the best food, driving the fastest cars, while most of the world's population eat a small bowl of food, then sleep on a mat for a few hours, resting up for another 18-hour workday? Did you know that half of the 6 billion people on the planet live on less than $2 a day? The price of a cup of designer coffee at Starbucks it makes me sick just thinking about it. Okay, you can tell this was taking place 20 years ago when Starbucks coffee cost $2 a day. <laughs> that is not how much Starbucks costs you now. Our stuff lives better than most of the people in the world do. To say nothing of how we're treating nature. You drill for oil in the Arctic Circle, why not? Rich white men need to get richer, don't they? You drop the emission standards so gas companies can turn a bigger profit? Sure, why worry about the ozone layer when we've got stockholders to think about? Nature is going to mutiny one of these days. Giant earthquakes or floods just to evict our sorry butts. I mean, doesn't anyone remember the Lorax? Who is speaking for the trees these days? We're producing and consuming ourselves into oblivion, completely out of touch with the real world, the natural world. If your life depended on it, could you tell what time it was by the sun? Could you find north without a compass? Could you tell the difference between a white oak and a red maple? Pfft, I didn't think so. We're not fit to live in the world anymore. We're tourists clear-cutting our way across the planet till nothing's left in case you're interested, the maples, the one with the wide three-pointed leaves. That's where I'm going to stop with you guys. Your check, I won't get a chance to read it to you again until, hang on, today, 422, until page 115. So you're going to be reading from page 66 up through page 115 on your own. Um, there's things coming up. Um, especially with this beta gold person. Tomorrow, I will have a, a lesson at 10 o'clock, but it's going to be a short one. I'm just going to explain how the Canvas thing works, walk you guys how to do it on my website or on the Canvas page, and explain and answer questions and stuff like that. And then I'm going to give you guys that whole next, like almost a week, to then do the Canvas thing um, and then go through and submit your, uh, what do you call it, um, stuff to Canvas. Oh, and then read, and then there'll be a quiz coming up on Monday on the book up through page 114. Other than that, uh, hang on one second. Uh, sorry, I'm looking at your guys' things you did on the chat. I missed some of them. Mm -hmm. From Frozen CD, nicely done. Uh, fun. 
this is literally just gibber the book and a footnote and you guys are just talking trash i don't know who addison is uh and then to there oh um tuesday no uh, still no school so uh let's have no school still nothing on monday tuesday is when we're going to be having the uh quiz uh, and that's when the thing on canvas will come doing stuff like that so you guys have until then other than that unless you guys have any other questions I'm going to close this one out to kick out all of the kids who are coming in for my regular class because this has to reset. So we're going to close this one and then we'll see you guys tomorrow. Shorter one for you guys tomorrow because we have the other thing. All right. Um, I think that's it. Uh, oh, do midterms. Natalie, I honestly have no idea on midterms. I'm not even sure they're doing midterms. Uh, I believe they're just doing a total fourth nine weeks grade and that is it because they're sort of changing how everything works. Well, hang on a second. I want to look at Ooh, nice artwork. I dig. All right. Yeah. Hang on a second. Hang on. I can. Uh, 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 uh. It's fighting me. Don't fight me. Mm -hmm. There you go. Riley, you can unmute yourself. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I mean, it looks like something's kind of just going like, or doing like a little, hang on one second, back to this person, at the spotlight, back to me, doing the little thing where you do the little one. I don't know, but I think it's adorable. Regardless, I like it, so. It's just a bunch of shading. Oh, hang on. And then McKenna. Oh, wait, bearded dragon? Yes. Nice. Oh, <clears throat> how old is he? Uh, she's two years old. Nice, adorable. All right. Thank you. Yay. My daughters want something like that, too. I've had to teach them to become more responsible. <laughs> um, Colin, why are you so excited about Captain Underpants? I don't know. It's a book from like eight years ago. <laughs> I thought you were just really proud of yourself because you finally read it. And you're like, I nailed that book. And you're wanting to brag. I didn't want to take that one away from you. All right. I'm going to close this one out so I can post it, upload it. And then I'm going to start for the regular kids. All right. Check y'all's. Leopard geckos. La la la. Da 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 da